Rockfall hazards are the most frequent risk factors involved in the geotechnical engineering space. To meet the need for in-depth 3D analysis of slopes at risk of rockfalls and outline suitable mitigation measures, Rockfall 3 was designed. Rockfall 3 is a 3D statistical analysis program developed after its 2D counterpart, Rockfall 2. Leveraging satellite data, Rockfall 3 makes your 3D model creation precise and rapid. Additionally, using its advanced 3D data visualization, you can clearly view rock paths, trajectories, and stop locations to better identify the risks associated with falling rocks. This introductory tutorial outlines the basic modeling and data interpretation features in Rockfall 3. The finished file of this tutorial can be found in the Tutorial 1 Getting Started data file. All tutorial files installed with Rockfall 3 can be accessed from the Rockfall 3 main menu by selecting File, Recent Folders, and then Tutorials folder. The Project Settings dialog is used to configure the main analysis parameters of the model. To open the dialog, select Project Settings on the toolbar or the Analysis menu. For this tutorial, we'll keep all the default parameters. In Rockfall 3, there are two analysis types to choose from in the Project Settings Methods tab, Lump Mass and Rigid Body. The default method is Lump Mass. In the Lump Mass method, the rocks are assumed to be very small point masses with no physical size. We'll be using the lump mass method for this tutorial. The rigid body analysis method allows you to define rock shapes. Rock shapes are covered in later tutorials. Select the solver options tab. Note the various control parameters. Once one of these conditions is met, the rock will stop moving. For more help on engine stopping conditions, see the engine stopping condition settings in Rockfall 3. For this tutorial, leave the default settings as it is. Click OK. In Rockfall 3, the slope can be created from a point cloud imported from a geometry file, extruded from an existing Rockfall 2 file, imported from an RS3 or Slide 3 file, or from satellite data using the terrain generator feature. In this tutorial, we're going to import a provided OBJ geometry file. Select File, Import, then Import Geometry, or go to the Geometry menu and click Import Export, then Import Geometry. Select the provided Tutorial 1 OBJ file in the Tutorials folder. By default, the installation program puts the files in this folder. You'll see the Import Geometry dialog, which displays the preview of the geometry. Select the Mesh object and click on Post Processing. In the Post Processing step, you can simplify and repair the geometry. The supplied sample geometry file has been modified and fixed for this tutorial. We recommend performing both simplify and repair operations on any imported geometry for fast and reliable computing and analysis results. Click Done. You will then be prompted to set the imported surface as the slope. Click Yes. Select Materials, Define Materials. This opens the Define Material Properties dialog. The program has three built-in materials. Rename the first material to Hard, and change the mean normal restitution to 0.5 and tangential restitution to 0.9. Click on the Stats button for tangential restitution and change the relative max to 0.1 so the range will be from 0.78 to 1.0. When you click on the Define All Statistics button, it should look like the following. Select the second material and rename it as Soft. Change the mean normal restitution to 0.3. Make sure the tangential restitution is 0.8 and the standard deviation for the two restitutions are both the 0.04 and the relative min and max are all 0.12.
keep the friction angle at 30 degrees with no distribution. Click OK. Select Materials, Add New Material Region. You'll notice that we're on the Material Region tab in the left pane. Select the Soft Material property and click OK. We're now in the Draw Polyline mode for defining the polygonal region with the Soft Material assignment. Roughly trace around the bottom of the pit. When you're done, right-click and select Done. The screen should look like the following. Click on the Edit Geometry button and you can see the points that define the polygon. Take note that the rest of the slope has the shading of the first hard material. By default, if no material region is assigned, the first slope material is used. Click on the Visibility Tree tab in the left pane to exit the material region's definition mode. Select the Cedar's Workflow tab. Select Cedar, Define Cedar Properties. This opens the Cedar Properties dialog. For the first Cedar, change the number of rocks to 200. We'll keep the starting velocities at zero so the rocks can free fall from the Cedar location. Click on the Add button and select Add New Cedar Property. In the second property, change the number of rocks to 20. Enter 1.5 as the translational velocity. Click on the Stats button. Change the distribution to Normal and enter a standard deviation of 0.3. Click on the Times 3 button to auto-set relative min and relative max to 0.9. This is three times the standard deviation. Click OK. In the Translational Velocity Orientation dropdown, select Trend Plunge Enter 225 degrees for the trend angle. Click on the Stats button and change the distribution to Normal and enter a standard deviation of 5. Click on the Times 3 button to auto-set relative min and relative max at 15, once again, 3 times the standard deviation. Click OK to save and exit out of the Cedar Properties dialog. For this model, we'll add a line and a point cedar. Select Cedar, Add Line Cedar. The Add Line Cedar dialog pops up. Make sure the first cedar property with 200 rocks is selected for the property. Select Height Above Surface from the drop-down beside Elevation. Enter 5 meters. Click on Add Points on Viewport. In the top view, Try to trace along the crest of the second uppermost bench on the left and lower left sides. When you're done, right click and select Done. Click OK to save and exit out of the dialog. Now let's add the point cedar. Select Cedar, Add Point Cedar. Select Cedar Property 2 in the Property dropdown. Select Enter Coordinates in the Select Point dropdown. Enter the coordinates 160366, 305, 2099 in the Coordinates area. Press OK. Now you're ready to compute. Select Analysis and hit Compute. Select the Results Workflow tab. What you see immediately are the translational velocity contours of the rock fall paths. In the Legend pane on the right, you can select from the drop-down to view either data like rotational velocity, translational kinetic energy, bounce heights, runout distances, endpoint locations, and more. Select Interpret Graph Endpoints. Select OK in the Chart Options dialog. This plots the horizontal runout distances histogram. Close the graph by clicking on the X icon in the View tab. 
select Interpret and then Create Surface Heat Map. We recommend that you turn off the Rock Path results using the Toggle Rock Path Results toolbar option. There are two modes, Histogram and Heat Map. And the two data types are Endpoints and Impact Points. For the histograms, you can adjust the resolution of the squares projected on the slope. It's a very helpful tool to see where most of the rocks end up on the slope. With the impact points heat map, you can see the contact points of the rocks on the slope. Select Interpret Rock Path Information. If the option is disabled, you must have turned off the rock paths when looking at the heat map. Simply turn on the rock paths by selecting the Toggle Rock Path Results option in the toolbar. Now select the Rock Path Information option. Here you can see the tabulated summary of the path runs. You can sort and filter by any of the column headers. For example, click on the Max Kinetic Energy header cell and the table is sorted from lowest to highest. Click on the header cell again to reverse the sort from highest to lowest. Next, click on the filter icon in the Cedar header cell. In the pop-up dialog, select Point Cedar only. You'll notice that the table and the results only show the paths from the Point Cedar. You can clear off the filter by unchecking the checkbox at the bottom of the table. You can also click on the pencil icon to edit the filter. Or edit the filter by expanding the Edit Filters option to the left of the table. In the Runout XY option at the bottom, you can drag the slider to see only the paths with horizontal runout distances that are inside the range. To the left of the table, click to expand the Saved Filters option. Click on the Save Filter button at any time to save the current filter setup for later use. We'll leave it as an exercise to explore all the customizations you can make to this summary table and filters. A very useful feature of Rockfall 3 is the ability to animate rock balls. Select Interpret Animate Rocks. Unlike Rockfall 2, with Rockfall 3 you have the option to animate one or all of the rocks at the same time. Boost your project efficiency with a 360-degree analysis of Rockfalls using Rockfall 3's powerful 3D capabilities. Visit the link in the description below to get started with Rockfall 3 for free.